Hello, my name is Mehmet, and today's video is going to be on elementary variations. Variations are played in elementary up, so if you're a fifth grader or older, you're probably going to play with variations. If you're a third or fourth grader and you still play minor equations, then this video doesn't apply to you because you don't play with variations. So a variation is a little change or addition to the game of equations that makes it more interesting and complex. There are a total of 11 variations in elementary equations, but you choose three of them in each game. So when you choose a variation during the goal setting phase of the game, in a three player game, the goal setter would choose the variation first, picking one of these 11, followed by going clockwise, the person on their left would choose, and then the third person would choose, making a total of three variations. In a two player match, the non-goal setter would choose first, then the goal setter would choose, and then the non-goal setter would choose a second variation. If you're wondering why these four variations are in blue, these variations are only played in even years. Since next year is going to be 2020, we would play with the even-year variations, and in 2021's tournament, we would play with the odd-year variations, which are different. So the first variation is sideways. Sideways allows your players to turn non-zero numerals sideways, turning them into their reciprocals. For example, if you turn this two sideways, it would become its reciprocal, which is one divided by that number two. When you're playing, you turn the cube sideways if you were setting a goal like this. That two would be turned like that. This five is another example where you turn it sideways and it becomes one divided by five, which is a fifth. If you look in this example here of solution equals goal, the solution is 1 plus 2 plus 2 sideways equals 4 minus 2 sideways. In a solution, you don't have to t write the number sideways in your solution. You can just write SW underneath the cubes that you have sideways. You also don't have to make all of that cube sideways. Like, for example, this 2 here isn't sideways and that one is sideways. You can choose which ones you want to make sideways. So in this solution, if you have 1 plus 2, that's 3 and you add another half to that because two sideways is its reciprocal, one half, equals four minus two sideways, which is four minus one half. So if you do three plus one half, that equals three and a half. And if you do four minus a half, that's also three and a half. So the solution does equal the goal using sideways. If you look at the solution from the example, we can see that the, Q, the two from the goal was turned sideways. However, the twos from the, from the required were not turned sideways. You have to turn a cube sideways in the goal when you want people to interpret it as sideways or else it just stays normal. When you put cubes in required or permitted or forbidden, you don't turn them sideways and put them in. They can be interpreted however you want. So the solution writer in that example did one plus two plus two they only turn one of the two sideways and they left the other one as normal. So you have that choice. The next variation is upside down. Upside down allows for players to turn non-zero cubes upside down like this, which allows for the cube to be its negative value. So if you flip the two upside down, it would become negative two. If you flip the five upside down, it'd be negative five and so on. If you look at this solution here, the person did six times two upside down, they indicated with the UD under the two, equals zero minus three times four. This solution is very practical because on such a goal that goes into the negative numbers like negative 12, which is the value of the goal, the person only did a three cube solution for that goal Whereas if you, you didn't use upside down, it would take many more cubes to reach this goal. So as you can see, six times negative two is negative 12, and that equals negative 12. Now we have zero wild. In zero wild, the zero cube can represent any numeral, but that numeral must be the same throughout the goal and the solution. The zero can be from through one through nine, but it cannot be an operation such as plus or minus. If you look at this solution here, the solution is zero times six minus zero equals eight plus seven. The zero is being used to represent a three. And it has to represent three in both zeros because it can't change. The value of the zero can't change. 
So 3 times 6 is 18, minus 3 is 15. So 15 equals 15. The next variation is factorial. Factorial is represented by an exclamation mark. Factorial is the product of an integer and all the integers below it. So if you look at this 5 with the factorial sign exclamation mark on the end of it, it takes the number 5 and multiplies it by all the integers below it down to 1. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 equals to 120. So 5 factorial would equal to 120. You're only allowed to use the exclamation mark factorial two times in the goal and or the solution unless you've called mop, which is another variation. I'll explain it later. You can't have one cube solutions. So if you have a goal of six, for example, and you do three factorial, three times two times one, that would not work because factorial, although it does count as an operation, it does not count as a cube. So it would still just be a one cube solution and that's not allowed. If you look in this first example here, the goal is 29. And what the solution writer did was they did four factorial, which is 24, plus five equals 21 equals to 29. In the other example here, the goal is three plus one, and the person wrote seven times one equals three factorial plus one. As you can see, the solution writer interpreted the goal differently than how it was originally written. You're allowed to interpret the goal however you'd like. So you can interpret it as three plus one, which is four, or you could look at it as three factorial, which is six plus one equals seven. The solution writer in this example did seven times one and, and interpreted it with the factorial. Next variation is multiple operations. When you call multiple operations, any operation sign and required and permitted can be used as many times as wanted in any solution. If you call factorial, factorial signs are also unlimited in the solution, but are still limited to two in the goal. If you look at this example, the goal is 11 and the solution writer did 6 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 equals 11. 6 plus 1 is 7, plus 2 is 9, plus 2 is 11. So that matches. If we look at the solution from the example on the whiteboard, we can see that the plus sign only appears once on the mat and required, but was used three times in the solution. This is because it was mopped twice to create an additional two copies of itself. One other thing to mention, you do not have to write mop underneath each of the additional operation signs that you use, although I did an example. The next one is three operation solution. Any solution must contain at least three operation symbols in it. Factorial and mopped cubes do count, and here are all the operations that you can use that count for three op, which is pretty much every single one. But remember, your, your solution must still have at least two cubes in it. If you had fact, like three operations and mop call, for example, and if you did like one factorial, 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 that would not be a valid solution because it only has one cube. Additionally, many new players make the mistake of just making a normal solution like three times two. When three operation solution is called, they forget about it and they mess up that way. And they only have one operation. Next variation is remainder. When you call remainder, remainder is basically a division side that is flipped sideways. A remainder B equals the remainder when A is divided by B. Let's say that we had 20 remainder 3. Now you might be wondering, well, how do we calculate the remainder? It's actually fairly simple. You just do it like you do a normal division problem. So if we did 20 divided by 3, we'd see that you have 6 and you have 2 that's left after you get 3 times 6, which is 18. You can't go any higher than 18 to meet 20. If you do 7, then you do 3 times 7, that's 21, that's 1 higher than 20. So the highest you can go is 6, and you have a remainder of 2. So 2 would be the remainder. If you did 9 divided, if you did nine remainder 3, which fits perfectly, 3 times 3 equals 9, that 3 fits perfectly, then the remainder would just be 0, because there's no number that's left over. If you look, a couple of restrictions. Firstly, A and B have to be positive integers. You can't have any negative numbers. Additionally, A has to be less than or equal to 1,000. If you look at this solution here, it's 9 remainder 5 equals 2 times 2. If you look here, we can do the division problem and see that there's a remainder of 4 left over. So 4 equals 2 times 2, which is also 4. 
So we've now entered the variations that are to be played in the even years, like 2020, 2022, etc. The first one is average. Average makes all plus signs represent averaging two numbers instead of just addition. It's not an option to use, at, to use average. All addition signs are now average. You can't choose if you want to or if you don't want to. If you look at this example here, as you can see, you don't have to indicate that you used average because it's used in all addition signs. The solution is 0 plus 4 plus 6 equals 1 plus 7. 0 plus 4 averages out to be 2, plus 6, which is 8 divided by 2 because you average, averages out to be 4. On the goal side, you, have, you see an addition sign, so that also means average as well. So 1 plus 7 averages out to be 4. So 4 does equal 4. Next prime number. This variation involves using prime numbers. If you don't know what a prime number is, a prime number is any number that is divisible by only one and itself. Here are the first five prime numbers in order. 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11. Next prime number is represented by a multiplication sign. When you put the multiplication sign in front of a number, it makes that number skip up to the next highest next prime. For example, if we looked at this next prime of 8, it's 11. 8 is in between 7 and 11. The next prime number that is highest, higher than 8, is 11. If you look at the next prime of the next prime of 2, you'd have to do the process twice. The next prime number higher than 2 is 3, and if you do that again, you'd get 5, so that's the answer here. A has to be less than or equal to 200. Now, if you look at this example here, the goal is 5. The solution is the next prime, uh, with parentheses, 9 divided by 2. 9 divided by 2 equals the 4.5. The next prime number that is above 4.5 is 5, as you can see here. So 5 equals 5, and this solution would equal the goal. So now we have percent. Percent is represented by an upside down square root sign. It means percent of A percent of B. So you take A and you turn that into a percent of B. So in a goal or solution, A or B can be two digits as long as you're using it with the percent sign. You can still use a square root sign like, in, like normal. Percent is not required for all the square root signs. So if you look in this example here, the goal is 25% of 16. So you take A and you turn it into a fraction divided by 100. That's the percent. And you multiply it by B, which is 16. 25 divided by 100 can be simplified to 1 fourth. A fourth of 16 is 16 divided by 4, which is equal to 4. So 4 would equal 2 times 2. 4 would equal 4. The last variation is decimal point. Decimal point is represented by a power sign. Depending on the cube, your power sign will either look like a star or a carrot. This one is a star here, and this one is the carrot. So what you do with the power sign is it turns into the dot of a decimal point. So as you can see here, the 3.25, the dot is represented by the power sign to make 3.25. You can use at most three digits in your decimal, not more than three. So this one, 7.905, would not work because it has four digits. There are also multiple interpretations. So if we had two to the power of five, that can either be interpreted as a decimal point, which is 2.5, or it can be interpreted normally as two to the power of five, which is 32. So the choice is up to you. If we look at this example here, the goal is 5 to the power of 1. You can interpret that as 5.1 or 5 to the power of 1. In this case, the person interpreted it as 5 to the power of 1 normally, which is 5. So 3.5 plus 1.5 is 5. The player chose to interpret these power signs as a, de a decimal point, so 5 would equal 5. Thank you for watching this video on elementary variations. If you have questions, please feel free to put them in the comments below. These were the 11 variations that we're going to be playing in the 2019 to 2020 year of academic games. 
For the four variations that are played in odd years, I may make a video on that later when the time comes. Thank you.